Metal scholars, welcome to season two of our journey into the literary studies of the themes surrounding the mysterious band Sleep Token. Season one was devoted to the birth of Vessel, and the two EP will continue to delve into that, but in a more mature, more poetic, but at the same time, broader in range. The EP gives us hints about the metaphors and the analogies. Not as much clear as one. You get the temples. This is a trigger. Admittedly, I get the analogy of the body as a temple. Not only that, you look at the names of the songs, right? The song titles, and they're all places of worship. Calcutta from, um, you know, like Hindu culture, Nazareth from Christianity, uh, Jericho from Judaism, for example. I don't think that they want to focus on the religious aspect. It's just pointers, okay? I'm actually going to go back to 2017 when the only interview ever with Sleep Token was published. We are here to serve sleep and to project his message. Notice that he focuses on the aspect of past lives, you know, and most importantly here, we use the verb to project, right? So it's kind of like comparing it to a movie projector where he acts as this medium so we can watch and listen to the experiences between vessel and the entity sleep with conscious and subconscious interactions. And it's just beautiful, it's original, and that's what's so incredible about the possibilities of the lore. Life is dark, life is bright, life is ugly, life is beautiful. Don't get lost in genres. This is the overall arc in my opinion. Sleep token, they are storytellers. They're projecting these beautiful and these dark stories. You know, lovely and violent at the same time. So when you ask him about sleep, here's what he says, you know. This being once held great power bestowing ancient civilizations with the gift of dreams, the curse of nightmares. Here, in my opinion, too, is this great bridge, this channel, this rabbit hole that will take you to ancient civilizations and their dreams and nightmares. It's the second birth of Vessel, the second iteration, and he says, well, sleep is an ancient being. That's why we're gonna hear these echoes from Kolkata, from Nazareth, from Jericho the cycle of life and death, you know, how death becomes life, how life becomes death, you know, the whole cyclical aspect that will help you acquiesce <laughs> or, you know, at least just appease your desire for meaning. All right, so deep diving into the universe of the lyrics. The title will take you back to Kolkata. And how can Vessel do that through sleep? Remember that these are echoes of the past. We are just the cyclical nature of life being manifested right here and in the past and in the future is just a circle and we as storytellers we're not doing anything different that than what's already been done what's happened in the past in Kolkata it's gonna be brought back so we have those chants those rhymes those verses and they will give you a window into unrequited love stories of life death love obsession violence and Kolkata is a place of worship like i said you know they have temples dedicated to the goddess kali she's the mother of us all goddess kali is associated with destruction creation and transformation she's a terrifying figure with multiple arms she wears a necklace uh, made of skulls and a skirt made of dismembered arms so i personally think that this is really cool because it's related to horror, to, you know, morbid stuff, and I love that aspect about Sleep Token lore. Uh, well, Kali was born out of anger, and so was Vessel, right? He represents the good, the bad, and the ugly. Kali represents the enraged, you know, the ones who destroy everything in their paths. So it's kind of like, it suits the vibe of the destruction of love of something beautiful. Kolkata is associated with death and destruction, but it is actually more complex than that. It's retold by Vessel, so it has his own affection, his own passion fused into the whole experience. And the song is just pointing to the concept of time and the cyclical aspect to the cyclical nature of existence. Vessel begins to sing. Okay, he's, he's the bard, he's the rhapsode. He says, I am caught, tangled in, wrapped. 
Wrapped and quartered, tripping up and over, time lived again for just a moment, missing pieces find me. So it's the notion of entanglement here, it's both male and female. Here I'm going to present you two more deities, the love story of Radha and Krishna. I'm not going to delve into that, but suffice it to say that I feel that Vessel is telling their story as well, like tangled, uh, kind of like, you know, intertwined. So Radha and Krishna they are uh, one thing and they've gone through love loss traumatic events suffering you know the longing for eternal love suffering for someone who's not going to be part of your life anymore so i see a lot of similarities you know i picture kali as the goddess of destruction like i said the destruction of love the one responsible for the missing pieces krishna and radha they represent you know the the one who's been shattered to pieces and the echoes of their stories are resonating with vessels and now we will continue with the backdrop this is the backdrop but there's got to be an interference of the spirit that's actually current guiding vessel and sleep is the possibility of accessing all of these dimensions at once This actually, this rhyme and meter, they're similar to what we had on When the Bell Breaks. It's kind of like sweet, lovely, it's uh, an erotic manifestation. And then we have that mantra, right? And I wake, saying your name. this part feels like this you know mantra it's like lord krishna and vessel share the passion and they wake up madly in love and just infatuated and they just say their lover's name you are more than warm belief melting skywards more than silence broken you are more than warm belief melting skywards this is an interesting verse because you know he brings his lover to the realm of the living it's like flesh and bone it's saying you know you're more than belief actually for a moment i can feel it and i can all worship but i can also touch you like feel the touch it's right there it's super tangible i'm whole again for just a moment this is line well, this line here is the dreamy part you know where the sense of completeness is right here you know it's the the adam with eve it's like lord krishna with radha or orpheus with eurydice it's everything connected it's uh, all the stories are different but they are the same you know they share this similar fabric and we're all actually just rearranged carbon atoms you know with some zest of oxygen and hydrogen <laughs> And then I just noticed something peculiar, actually, you know, I noticed that he says, until the morning comes, right? He says, I'm whole again. I'm whole until the morning comes. I'm whole again for just a moment till the morning comes. And this shows to me that Vessel He's not really connected to his consciousness. He feels that, you know, the dark, um, sleeping, being unconscious, these feelings, that's what actually makes him whole. This is his true acceptance of the mask, his alter ego. It's like, goodbye to whoever you were, 
one had some echoes of that but here is two and it's time to compare your pain in your life to others who came way before you and who suffered similarly you know and uh, so I want to stay here until the morning comes I'm whole I'm, that's that's it till the morning comes now for the first time it feels like we have this conversation between the alter egos here uh, one says oh she said you'd better believe it maybe they're referring to the end of the relationship you know uh, after trying too many times now it's truly over you know you got to really accept it and then his other alter ego will say well you don't really know right you don't know oh, she said you Because this one, this alter ego is still like clinging to the past, to a love that could have been, to something that already died. And that's what happened to Lord Krishna, you know, he does that when he finds out that Radha is dead, actually. He can no longer uh, live with her. And the same with Orpheus when he finds out Eurydice is dead, the same with uh, Hades and Persephone in a way, you know, you're not going to be able to feel that love, you're not going to be able to touch that person anymore. And then the song continues like a mantra, focusing on the shattered pieces, which takes us back to Kali and the Goddess of Destruction. You know, it's a way to give us the allegory and to come like full circle. It's something that's being told and it's revamped, recycled, recreated, rearranged. So it's just re rearranging the molecules, but using the same atoms and musically just the, the song is just sheer beauty you know you got the major scale you got beautiful intervals you got the synths the arrangements it's just awesome and then you have the the ending with the genti part and and the ending gives you that vibe of like okay we're approaching darkness and loneliness and just strife and anger and and you know, it fades out and it shows you that life is cyclical. You know, life is beautiful and life is dark, just like Vessel mentioned uh, in that interview. And that concludes the quick trip to Kolkata. And next time we're going to go to Nazareth. And it's uh, it's going to be a long trip, but it's going to be an interesting one. And uh, I'm not going to be able to post a video on Wednesday because Nazareth is just freaking humongous and complex. So uh, it's even more complex. And it's taking me a long, long time, hours of research. So stay tuned till Saturday, April 4th, 11 a.m. EST. I'll publish my take, deep dive, you know, into Nazareth. And just as a teaser, do you know that Nazareth means branch in Hebrew? The branch metaphor, the same that we had on one. What does that mean? You know, just stay tuned and I'll let you know. What do you think about Kolkata? What's the story that you came up with? Just let me know in the comments. And hit the bell button and the like as well if you can't music is what music does embrace the night i'm signing out worship bye now